Let's cross to political and financial analyst Taha Arvas, uh, also in Istanbul. So let's look at what got us to this point. Do you think that the threat of U.S. sanctions played a part in this? Yeah, I think undoubtedly uh, it played a part. But like I, I had said earlier, uh, Turkey currently hosts, uh, you know, practically four million Syrian refugees. So there is a financial burden uh, that that is uh, that the Turks currently uh, shoulder in that respect. So there is, yes, there would have been a financial impact for sanctions, but there is already a financial impact that uh, that the Turkey is burdening because of uh, these refugees. So once they return to the safe zone and are repatriated to their homes in Syria, uh, then Turkey will uh, that that cost will be lifted. Obviously, Turkey isn't doing it for is, is doing it for humanitarian reasons, but I think uh, sanctions are a part of uh, of the of the reason why this was resolved, but I don't think it, they're the main, main reason uh, why, why Turkey and uh, the United States made an agreement here. There's a lot to achieve in that 120-hour pause, isn't there? Five right. days. Uh, how smoothly do you think the withdrawal of the YPG is, is, is going to be and the setting up of this safe zone? Well, I think the United States is motivated here uh, by, you know, the, the, uh, the YPG is aligned with Russia now, so I think the last thing the United States wanted was to uh, essentially leave that area uh, all of Syria um, for the Russians and for the Iranians that are allied in Syria. So yes, it's going to be tough and yes, it's going to be difficult for the United States to convince the YPG uh, to disarm, but uh, I think there's really no other choice uh, unless they're, they're willing to, as I said, you know, leave that area entire, in its entirety to Russia and the Iranians, then they have no other choice but to uh, disarm the YPG. Yeah, you've also got, as you, as you rightly pointed out, the, the Russian presence on the ground. Um, and we know that President Erdogan is, is going to be meeting with the Russian President uh, Putin. Uh, what is going to happen to uh, places um, like Manbij and Kobani, where Russian forces are present? Uh, that's a good question. I think that's going to play out. But I think both Russia and the United States realize that Turkey has legitimate uh, concerns, uh, security concerns. And like I said earlier, there are four million Syrians that need to return to their homes, that want to return to their homes. And it, there's a humanitarian crisis. Uh, as long, the longer they, they take to return, it, the longer uh, that crisis continues. So um, I think Russia and the United States realized uh, Turkey's concerns here. And I think the time has come for this war to end and for these uh, refugees to be repatriated. Uh, just one question on the on the issue of sanctions, because of course uh, a raft of new sanctions have been drawn up um, by uh, Congress today. Are they still going to kick in, or what happens to them now this uh, ceasefire has been agreed? Right. I mean, the the, the sanctions are interesting in that um, minutes after the sanctions were first announced, I think Lindsey Graham was the first to tweet them. Uh, the Pence uh, Vice President Pence uh, came out and talked about the agreement with Turkey. Um, but even if he had not, the, the sanctions call, the last statement, last line of the sanctions call for, um, give the power authority to President Trump to rescind the sanctions whenever he is con convinced that Turkey uh, has pulled back from the safe zone. So even if they had passed, which they're probably not going to at this point, uh, Trump could have unilaterally, unilaterally um, uh, stopped them had he signed them into law, which he probably wouldn't because he knows uh, that, that Pence is, that Vice President Pence was about to make an agreement with Turkey. Taha, good to speak with you. Thank you very much Thank indeed you. for that. Taha Abbas in Istanbul there.